Yesterday, Sieroji spoke about the supporting cause of bodhi jnana, the knowledge which knows the Four Noble Truths, the supporting cause of piti sambhojanga, or it is the supporting cause of a yogi who knows the Four Noble Truths. And today, according to the order, Sierauji will speak about Pasadi Sambojanga, Samadhi and Sambojanga, and Upeka Sambojanga. In the word Pasadi Sambojanga, there are three words. Pasadi is one, Samboja, Sambodhi is another, and Anga is, a, is the third. Pasadi means cool peacefulness. And it's not like um, coolness of winter or any type of coolness that one would find unpleasant or, or not wanted. It's a truly necessary type of coolness. When one is free of heat, then coolness, disappears, coolness arises, it appears. There are many things which cause heat in our body. First of all, raga. So there is attachment to various objects, various lives. This grows gradually and it becomes, it reaches the point of becoming demanding. It's only satisfied if it gets what it wants. This is the fire of raga, the fire of lust. When one meets up with something that is not to one's liking, there's anger, depression, resentment, bearing grudges, and this is the fire of, of anger, dosagi. If these happen, one burns. And then there's the fire of not knowing. One doesn't know that these things are suffering. One doesn't know the things which are really there. One doesn't know about that which is to be known, that which is to be dispelled, that which is to be realized and that which is to be developed because one hasn't studied. And when one doesn't know what is suffering and what is its cause, then one thinks of the opposite. Then one thinks that what is the opposite of true happiness is happiness, and one thinks that true peace is something to be afraid of. They think people who um, have this misconception think that uh, because practice, this meditation practice, is for the end of new lifetimes, they think this brings a big death and they fear the path of practice because of their attachment to life. Those who are attached to life and think they have a good life, um, think the things that they enjoy are good, they fear not having any new life. So when one doesn't know the true Dhamma, one goes the wrong way. And this is moha. One wa there's wavering, lack of clarity. And for most people in the world, this quality is hidden from their view. It's submerged. When raga, lust, becomes extreme, one commits mistakes. When one's dosa or anger becomes extreme, one, one makes mistakes. And because of these, uh, be, 
because of going to extremes and then acting on these. There are many problems in the world which are very difficult to untangle. So when one knows, uh, one, so one needs to learn according to the text about uh, one needs to know about what is true suffering and the, uh, the truth. One has to learn about these and discuss if one doesn't understand from the text. And then, so one, need, then, so one then knows, oh, this is, really, this is what suffering is. And then knowing this, one's attachment to the things that are not true happiness gradually decreases. And as one practices, one gains peace bit by bit. So when one practices sila, the training of morality, the gross type of heat no longer arises, the coarsest level of heat. And with the practice of samadhi, the medium level of heat is suppressed. And with the practice of knowledge, when knowledge arises, then the very seeds of heat are uprooted. They are put out. And when yogis know well, they, um, they come to realize this piece of heat dying down bit by bit. So for yogis who are careless, they will not even get a glimpse of peace careless yogis just look here and there, talk, and uh, for them they won't experience anything special. Yogis who are practicing respectfully, who are practicing meticulously, although their posture changes, they may be sitting or walking, standing, lying down, bending, stretching, leaning, whatever the yogi does, there's um, one's mindfulness is not dropping. Every, one is noting at every single arising and always guarding the mind with vigilant mindfulness. So there's no mental defilements that can arise. The mind is protected and this is the, uh, what sati does, rekaverna goti, it protects the mind and it blockades, uh, creates a blockade so that kilesas can't come in. And because the mind is protected and defended in this way, it becomes secure, free of the defilements. So when one has one minute or two minutes, three or four minutes, where the noting is continuous, the noting is good and continuous, then in, at that time the mind becomes clear. And the qualities which enter the mind and make it muddy, which, which stir it up, these are no longer able to enter. So the mind becomes clear bit by bit. And at that time, pasada, sada, the type of faith, it's called bright faith. Um, it starts to arise. And if one continues to practice from this point, then one discerns mind and matter, or nama and rupa. And then one faith, one's faith increases more although there's still, uh, it's still not completely firm. As one continues to practice, one sees how nama and rupa are related as cause and effect, and then one is free of doubts because one knows that mind and matter do not arise without a cause. They arise due to causes, 
and thus one uh, over one eliminates the view of causelessness ahetu kadeti the wrong view that things just happen without a cause and one also sees how things each each have their own cause the a relevant cause brings a relevant effect so this um eliminates the view of fictitious cause that things arise due to causes that have no relationship to the thing that is the result for example one one in the moment of seeing one understands that seeing happens by because one observes seeing at the time it happens one understands that because of the eye and the visual object that strikes the eye these two are causes for seeing to occur and when the visual object uh, strikes the eye then one there's knowing that arises there's seeing so there's uh, this the cause is the eye the physical eye and the sight which is seen and the result is seeing and with the ear too there's an ear and the sound strikes the ear and when one when one observes that one knows oh the hearing is happening at the ear the hearing is happening because of the sound striking the ear so the ear and the sound are causes and the hearing that occurs when the sound strikes the ear is the result so in this way one sees through experiencing the senses that there's no creator making these things happening uh, when we don't know what the true cause is we uh, sometimes we insert a fictitious cause and so uh, not knowing how hearing happens seeing happens and so on one thinks that a creator causes it but with practice one sees how each thing has its own cause so one understands first of all that uh, there's these seeing hearing and so on what we experience does not happen without a cause they have a cause so this eliminates i hate to kadeti and then one understands too that it's not made by a creator so when one becomes uh, when one understands like this one's faith becomes uh, one trusts one has one's trust builds so this could be called a trusting faith so when knowledge arises then one's tr- uh, trusting faith increases more and when one continues to practice becoming free of uncomfortable feelings um then even more so one feels um one feels this trusting faith faith in what one is doing and especially when one one sees the fleeting arising and passing away of phenomena how the old is continually being replaced by the new one after another the mind becomes very very clear and at that time light light emits from one's body light sent, comes out of the body and one's knowledge is an observation is very agile and quick so at this point one feels decisive about the path this path is definitely right one feels this adhimaka which is also trusting faith decisive faith so initially uh, yogis may have had other beliefs but 
when one understands how things truly happen, then the wrong ideas about things ha- how things happen disappear. They're seen, they're, one no longer believes them. And similar to when light arises, darkness is dispelled. So knowing the correct, uh, the correct way that things happen, one no longer believes in the wrong way. So clear faith arises when the mind is free of nivaranas, the obstacles to concentration. And this trusting faith arises because of what we come to know in the practice. In one's stream, in the stream of one's life, that is the stream of kaya, vedana, citta, and dhamma, matter, feeling, consciousness, and general things. If one observes every object that arises, then the mind becomes clear. So one has heard about this quite, lot, quite fully. And when one practices, one can compare Actually, one doesn't need to deliberately compare. One knows automatically when uh, when one experiences this clarity in one's practice. One knows that what is said in the texts and what one is and the experience are um, directly correlating. One knows that the the experience is in agreement with the text. And at this point, accepting faith, o kapana sada, arises. And once sati is good, it's firmly established, and it's able to note even small objects at this point. At first, in the practice, one is only able to observe things that are obvious. But at this stage in the practice, one is able to see all kinds, whether th- whether they're obvious or subtle. One can see all these grades of objects. One sati has momentum, like when driving a car and one can just take one's foot off the gas pedal and coast. So this sati becomes exceptional. And one comes to, uh, because of the exceptional clarity that develops, one comes to cherish every single noting. So at this time, one's physical and verbal behavior are clean and pure. And one's mind also, one's mentality is clear, clean and pure. And with knowledge arising, then, even the subtle level, the subtle level of kilesas are eliminated. They have no chance to arise. In terms of the trainings, all three trainings, the trainings of sila, samadhi, and panya are all present. Morality, concentration, and wisdom. And in terms of the path, all the factors of the forerunner path are being developed. So then one cherishes each moment of observation. One cherishes the mindfulness that has been developed. And at that point at this point one is both disgusted and fears Kilesa's arising. One doesn't want to miss a single thing because one doesn't want kilesas to come in and disturb the purity. So one's moral shame and moral dread, Hiri and Otapa, became, become exceptional at this point. And at this time, there's not even any subtle type of greed. It doesn't arise. 
there's not medium, there's not moderate greed, and there's not greed occurring on a, lo- on a gross level. There's no dosa occurring. And one is able to note whatever arises in a balanced way. So at that time, at this time, there is kaya pasadi and cheta pasadi. The mind and the concomitant mind states, they've become completely free of heat and they've become cool. This is this coolness of pasadi, tranquility, is not something that is deliberately developed, but at the stage of Udhyabhyanyana, it arises naturally. Because one knows how things arise and pass away in a very fleeting manner, um, one one starts to feel there's no heaviness in one's body at all. And what there is one when one sitting is sitting, one feels light. When walking, one feels light. Bending and stretching, leaning and so on, one feels quite light and easy. And this is very very clear. And at that point, there's no. Um, there's no sort of sticky points in one's noting. There's nothing that's difficult about about one's observation. And uh, there's no also no missing. One doesn't miss anything. And one becomes skilled, very skilled in what one is doing. This is the quality of Paguna. So one, when one encounters these special dhammas, the quality of uprightness, uzuka, arises. And one's mind becomes very straightforward and honest. And one, if one has erred in the past, one remembers this and one wants to set things straight. One, one confesses, one admits one's faults. And one also wants to avoid doing anything that is not upright. One, very importantly, one knows what one is lacking. And because of one, because one sees this, one fills up the gaps that one sees, and thus one progresses in the practice. And in particular, one remembers the past things that one has done wrong, and one wants to set one's, one's life straight. So one does this, no matter how, um, no, ma- no matter how great the wrong was. One, first of all, is uh, open with oneself about the wrong, and then to one's teachers. So this honesty, uprightness, is the quality of a true human being. And it is not easy to develop such uprightness without practice, but we get this through the practice. Those who have reached this stage, this type of situation, have an upright mind. So there's no way that there's going to be any crookedness of mind arising. It's said that those who are upright always have plenty to eat. Because when one is upright and honest, others recognize that. And trusting, uh, trusting you, they will uh, want to be friends, they will want to associate with you. If one is crooked, then other people won't trust that person, won't want to hire them, won't want to be friends. In society, this quality of being upright is very important for society, for a society to work. So at this time, the five factors of a, of a person who can realize special dhamma, the five padanianga, are fulfilled. 
because faith, there's this okapana faith, has become fulfilled. One has, um, one understands the quality of the Dhamma at this point, that the Dhamma is that which uplifts the one who practices the Dhamma. It elevates one. It makes one who practices practices it. It makes one's behavior uh, physically, verbally, and mentally cool and peaceful. So one understands the quality of the Dhamma and one understands too that on, the Buddha only preached this Dhamma after having become cool and peaceful himself. So one understands in a very simple way about the qualities of the Buddha. It said, Santo So Bhagawa Samataya Dhammang Deseti. This, the Buddha, our true refuge, the Buddha, who became enlightened over 2,500 years ago, having fulfilled the paramis. Santo, he only, only after he had become free of agitation did he teach the Dhamma. Ordinary people are always agitated with either lust, there's the agitation of lust, the the agitation of anger, the agitation created by ignorance, confusion. Whenever kilesas are occurring, there is agitation. There is no peace. The Buddha, first of all, quieted down and put out all the agitation of the kilesas. And only then did he he teach the Dhamma, which is the way to create this um, still, cool, peaceful state. So at this point, one understands, when one feels this cool uh, peacefulness for oneself, one understands the quality of the Buddha, that he was free of all agitation, of, of kilesas. So one comes to know about the qualities of the Buddha in this way. And so one's faith is strong. And regarding health, at this point in the practice, people who were initially unhealthy gain their health. The mind is upright, so there's, it's straightforward and honest. There's no pretense or maya regarding qualities one doesn't have, and there's no hiding of one's faults. One is completely honest. One's effort has increased and has momentum. And one sees the fast arising and passing away of phenomena. So if one has reached this situation, then just continue to practice, because in this life you will gain the special excellent Dhamma. So for the yogis who have been here for more than a month now, examine yourself. And you can decide for yourself based on this if this is this if this situation is what you are experiencing, then you definitely can gain special dhamma if you continue. This part of the practice is very satisfying. If one reaches a situation like this, then one is satisfied with what one is doing. One knows the benefits which have arisen, and knowing this, one feels joyous and happy and peaceful. It said, Pasadakayo Sukhang Vedeti, that one experiences happiness, sukha, 
when what, uh, the person whose body has body and mind have become peaceful, cool, and tranquil. This pasadi feels cool and peaceful. And sukha is when one, it feels, uh, one feels good. So where this comes from is from piti the joyous interest. And whatever one is doing, one feels, whether one is sitting, walking, standing, lying down, one feels good doing it. And one feels happy in the Dhamma. So before this stage, one uh, sometimes feel felt, because there were ups and downs, one didn't experience this type of happiness. But at this stage, one feels happy with whatever one is doing. One feels happy in the Dhamma. And so at this stage, it feels very good. At this time, it is said, Sukhi no chitang samadhiati. The one who, who is happy, one who is experiencing sukha, for that person the mind becomes collected. So at this point the mind is collected, there's no scattering, no wandering. The mind falls collectedly on the object, whatever object one observes. There is steadfast observation and therefore the mind falls collectedly on that. So this um, not dispersing is the natural characteristic of samadhi. And samadhi functions to collect the mind on a single object. This is called sampendana rasa. When the mind is collected on, on that object where we put it, there is no agitation. So the manifestation of samadhi is calmness. Yogis experience this. And when they experience this, samadhi sambojanga is occurring. This uh, quality of samadhi sambojanga, also like the previous uh, PD pasadi, it occurs if the previous ones have occurred. So it, it comes about naturally. Tomorrow, Sieroji will explain about the remaining factors of the remaining Sambojangas from a point of theory and practice. <laughs>